What is this? I don't even know. Here we go. Three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. It is the B&O stream today on Monday, the 8th of August, 2022. It's an 8 slash 8 day today. Mark it in your calendars. It's today, actually. <laughs> don't don't want to mark it anywhere. But, uh, yeah, no, if you've been longing for the day, well, congrats. It is the day. Uh, so I'm, I'm being a welcome to the stream. Uh, I'm playing Spire of the Dragon today, and I am a little bit unprepared, but that's okay. Because it's better to be a little bit unprepared than to be a lot bit prepared. Right? That's how it works. There you go. I have like steam overlays going all over the place. I'm like, oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. There we go. Okay, so let's hop into the game today. So let's jump over. Uh, I need to unmute the desktop. Oh, my button's not unmuting. We're going old school. We're going old school. Very odd. That is very odd. My, uh, yeah. My stream deck was like, oh no, I'm not, I'm not doing the, uh, the audio buttons today. Very odd. So, uh, today on the stream, I'm playing and finishing Spyro the Dragon. Let's watch that wonderful intro again while I take the swig of 120 mils of water. I love the sound of plastic water bottles. So anyway, I hope you've all had a wonderful week. I just kind of meandered around, I don't even know what happened over the last two minutes. Uh, I hope you've all had a wonderful week. Uh, I've had a pretty good week. Bit of, bit of work, bit of like trying to figure out, you know, technical stuff that I've never figured out before. But, I'd say, yeah, reasonable success. Reasonable success. So, uh, yeah, just figuring out some new programming things. Uh, but yeah, if you if you chimed in, the last stream was the first half of the game, so uh, I guess I'll be playing the rest of the game. I uh, went back to the first world, we've cleared everything out, and now we got a new world to to uh, engage with. The Beast Makers. They make beasts? I guess that's what they do. Uh, yeah, other than that, uh, no, it's been pretty chill, uh, I finished two games over the last week, I might as well just jump in with this, um, but, uh, might as well just, first of all, talk about the Beastmaker's World, uh, the Beastmaker's World is definitely the trickier one, I think as a kid I did manage to beat this game, I do remember getting tricked on, but I think the magic craft as well was mostly where the tricks uh, started getting me. I didn't find the rest of the uh, the game to be too much more difficult. Unless if you get past the magic world, magic crafters, that is. Uh, so I think the best thing to do is actually to take on the level that's right here. Nasty Nork is turning our swamp into an electrified junk heap. And it used to be so beautiful. I'm sure it was. Nice. Uh, so yeah, so rather than clearing out the hub world, let's just go right into the level. Because, uh, yeah, the, the hub world's a bit of a straight line, so it makes a lot of sense to just go for it. This level is kind of weird because the music doesn't start up all, like, five seconds in. But, uh, yeah, no, lots of swamp levels. you got big dudes with electric prods. I love these, like, little uh, metal dudes in the little shells. Because uh, they like zapping the chickens and they make a funny noise. <laughs> Amazing sound. Amazing. Oops. Oops. Okay. Uh, I think I was kind of allured to this place by its, uh, its green sky... Uh, well, skybox, I guess. Like, it's just this, like, bizarre green that, like, you can imagine. But it's, it's so hazy, it's, it's kind of mystifying, if anything. The skyboxes in this game 
Very minimal. Does the job. And each level has its own little iconic color palette in the sky. Which for a game about being a dragon, I guess that's kind of a nice thing to have. Oops. Uh, unfortunately, you don't fly a lot in any of these games. There's also a lot more indoors than perhaps some of the later games. There's something nice about uh, just being in the sky. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, nah. Finished uh, two games over the past week. Uh, so I might as well talk about them. The first game was uh, Horizon Chase Turbo. Uh, Horizon Chase Turbo is an indie game. It's one of the few indie games that I've said, hey, it's actually pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. Especially for its value. I really liked it. Horizon Chase Turbo is effectively uh, an indie love letter to uh, games like OutRun. Uh, I'm going to chuck Rad Racer in the list. Uh, probably more, but that kind of style of uh, not yet Mode 7, uh, trying their best, um, trying their best kind of 3D-ish racing angle. Watch out, Spyro. The Norks in these parts have discovered the power of electricity, and it really stings. Good tip. You'd also know uh, there's going to be more gems and fewer dragons in all these levels. Like, there's only two dragons in this level. Fewer dragons does make it a bit trickier to, uh... Um... To, you know, do checkpoints, I guess, but... Oops. It's not too bad, because there's plenty of chickens all around. Uh, also, note these electric guys become an absolute pain if they zap the floor just as you hit them. That guy nearly got there. Not quite, though. Uh, and then, yeah, you got, like, an enemy in the way. It's like, oh. You just, you just gotta make sure you clear those guys out first. That's pretty much it. Good job, Spyro. One day you'll be able to tell all the dragons about your amazing adventures. Sure, but what I'd really like to do is get out of this swamp. That, <laughs> that's a bit of a smack, isn't it? Oh well. Because, like, they, like, they kept saying it's like the Norks, like, turn their swamp into something worse. Even though, I'd probably imagine it's, uh, taking industrial elements and chucking them onto a swamp. This one is probably one of the meaner ones. There you go. Actually, no, no, that one's the meanest one. That guy. Because you just gotta time it, like, so, so well. I want to get there. Uh, what else about Horizon Chase Turbo? So yeah, it, it does a, it's, it's in the Unity engine, but it does a kind of recreation of the, the foreshortening effect that you get, uh, giving you a decently good sense of speed, um, when playing the game. So that's nice. Uh, you do go, that, that's what I mean. <laughs> you hit the guy, but you also were too late, so. Uh, that's the end of the level. There's definitely more gems lying around. Uh, particularly in this underneath area, so let's explore down here. There you go, lots more down here. Uh, this one was also, this level was also one of the trickier ones for me uh, as a kid, because you'd have to nail this like, fairly involved glide. Um, you'll see it in a bit. Uh, but yeah, so Horizon Chase Turbo, um, one thing that's really like nice about it is I think for the value, it's, I think it's 14 and a half Australian dollars, so that'd be a $10 indie game uh, in the US. Um, and uh, it's kind of claim to fame, it's that every level is a different track, and while there is generally this idea of like, eh, I mean, you know, not every track feels particularly crazy different than the last, there's a lot of like, you know, nice fun designs in the tracks uh, where they put uh, extra boosts, uh, where you gotta do your overtakes, how the feel of the curves are, um, there's definitely, I guess, a fair bit of variety going on, um, like a straight course feels very different to a much more narrow and twisty course, um, I guess I hit that, <laughs> that box up there. There you go. So this is what I mean about like this tricky glide, is that you, like, it's another one of those blind ones, you'd have to just know that you glide from up here onto this ledge. 
there is an enemy down there. But the main reason why you want to get up here, particularly, is because there's, uh, yeah, there's two fireworks up here. Now, if you're playing the, uh, the remaster, there's a, uh, a skill point in this level, I know that, where you have to hit all three fireworks in 15 seconds. The third firework is down below. There it is. So, it's fairly obvious that it's there, but you just have to make sure that you set them off, you know, at the appropriate times. Um, and unfortunately, it does mean you kind of have to do a second glide up here. Um, I think that area you kind of have to... Oh, I should have I should have cleared that out. Ah. Listen, I'm not speedrunning it today, so... Lots of gems, though, I'll tell you that. Oh, I guess you don't have to go down there. Well, that's 400 or 400, so easy. Uh, yeah, uh, and there's a lot of tracks in that Horizon Chase Turbo. There's, like, um, I'm gonna say 109. I think there's actually 109 levels. Um, they're fairly short. Most of them will take two minutes. Some three, some five for some reason. I don't know why. The, like, most of them are three laps. Sometimes shorter tracks are four laps. For some odd reason, some of the really long ones, I don't know why, they're just five, why not? Um, uh, but yeah, other than that, it's it's a fairly simple arcade racer. You start from the back, you try and drive forward. Uh, the AI play fair for the most part. Like, they're a bit mean, they'll kind of try and shove you off and then they don't respond to, uh, to getting pushed in the same way that you do. Which is a bit unfortunate, but you've always got the ability to overtake them. Look at these weird pigs. Uh, you've always got the ability to overtake them. They're not, like, two in the way. Um, and it's tricky at times, but generally no level takes more than a couple of attempts. So, I'd say generally fair. Uh, my biggest issues with uh, the game stum uh, stem from classic... Uh, oh, no, there's a guy around here. There's a pig jump scare right there. Uh... My biggest issues come from the uh, artificial achievement padding. You, you, you've got each level. Oh. Spyro, it's great to see you, but I've got to go. Oh, and he's gone. Well, that's 50 dragons, which I believe is the requirement on this world. I think it is. If it's not, uh, maybe that's the next world. There's 50 dragons. There's only 80 in the game, but... Nah, I think it is this world. I think the next world requires, like, a bunch of treasure, so... Uh, let's go into the wild flight. You know, the flight level's here, might as well do it. Um, this flight level's probably the trickiest one in the whole game, uh, because you've got to deal with these boat guys. Uh, I find the easiest, or the quickest way to have enough time at the end is to kind of ride uphill here and then you're gonna try and get the archers while also getting the guys sailing past there you go it's one more boat there he is maybe not the quickest but eh, certainly efficient so the archers and the boats are in that half of the level and then you've got the chess and one last item on the other side there we go, through the arch. That's not an arch, but sure. Uh, let's get him oncoming. Oops. I believe they do a... Do they do a figure eight? I'm pretty sure they do a figure eight. No, they don't. It's just two rings of people. Okay, sure. So, plenty of time left over. Just make sure you don't touch the water on the way up. It is kind of kind of irritating but generally not too bad not too bad that was actually that was a really smooth run I gotta keep forgetting I'm not doing a speed run right now I'm just I'm just playing the game cash but but sure uh yeah so so the way the game's structured is that you've got your big career mode where you can take each race like individually um races are just broken down by like area you need so many points uh, to go to the next area, you get more points if you come first. Uh, but then there's also some coins along the level, and uh, you get your maximum points by basically 
having all the coins as well as coming first in a race. Uh, there's also some bonus ones for fuel left over, but that's just bonus. Uh, nothing really too much for that. Into the wild, the misty bog, sorry. Not, not the wild bog, the misty bog. Um, so sure, you keep doing that. Um, and then eventually there's some upgrade races. You get like a, just a flat upgrade. Uh, so all your cars are slightly faster or they have better handling or they don't run out of uh, a fuel as quickly or something like that. Um, kind of nice, just, you know, gives you some general improvement as you're going along and makes the ending races feel much more dramatic than the beginning ones, uh, which is nice. Um, and then the reason why I say they padded out is because you do that, the game takes about seven hours, eight hours, takes a bit. Uh, then they've got the tournaments. So, uh, also I hate, I hate the little seeds, but the frogs are the worst. The frogs are the worst, because as a kid, I never even, and maybe as an adult, I never even figured out how you're supposed to take them on. I think you're supposed to jump at some point. Or commit. But these guys are horrifying when they're like charging up and when you get too close, they go. They pounce. They, they will eat you up. Spit you out. Chew you out. Terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. Uh, so, they've, yeah, so there's the tournaments which take, uh, sets of four races and puts them together. And, uh, the higher rank the tournament, the higher your stats are in the tournament. But you're also generally just up against the same difficulty opposition. But it's the same tracks, it's just condensed down into a four lap or four race tournament kind of mode. Sounds like it's kind of just reusing the same mechanics, but sure, okay. Be on the lookout for attack frogs. They are cold-blooded killers. Attack frogs? And this used to be such a nice swamp. Can't believe they turned frogs against us. It's not even Wednesday, my dudes. Uh, but uh, unlike Mario Kart, which is only 16, you know, four cups, 16 tracks, or I guess in the newer games, eight cups, 32 tracks. This is. 24 cups, and therefore, running at a nice. Oh my goodness, what happened to him? I guess I don't need to go to that platform anymore. Also, make sure you charge all these guys quite right. It just feels nice. Uh, if you jump down, then you, you can work your way back. This jump, I always hated it. It always just felt like it was so far away. And then you gotta land on this ledge with the attack frogs, and it's just like, oh. Just gotta take one hit. It's painful. Um, and then uh, you've got an endurance mode where you have to do 12 randomly picked tracks, then 36, then 109. You have to do every track in some random order, and you have to finish fifth at least on every single one of them. You can take a break, but you still have to do all of them in order. Or, not order, but you have to do all of them just in one, like, fell setting. It just, it feels so sluggish. Thanks for releasing me. It seems like I've been trapped in here since I was your age. Oh, no. Why? I remember. Uh, gotta go. Yeah, yeah. I love that room full of all the enemies, but I hate having to deal with the attack frogs, so I usually like trying to get to the other side and then hope for the best. So you don't get the chicken... I don't get your chickens. But at least I managed to do it without dying, so that's okay. This building, I was always fascinated with, because as a kid, I legitimately thought there was something on top of the building, and so I would legitimately try my best to, like, glide up here. And sometimes I can get it, sometimes I can't, and if I can't, then, uh... Well, you know how that ends up. <laughs> I'm gonna take another stab at that, because I might have nearly had it, and I've got plenty of lives to burn. It's a weird feeling, because it's like you're, you you are on a slope. Yeah, like you can stand on that ledge, and then you can work your way up here. And then I thought, like, oh, that's kind of weird, there's nothing up here. But, like, I can walk up here? Very odd. Just that one triangle, and don't, don't walk on too many other triangles. Yeah, oh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bizarre corner of the map. 
I guess it also almost gives you the opportunity to walk on top of that kind of roof. There's not, no need though. Now the fog on this level is, I guess it's called, what is it called? Misty, misty bog, so I guess having fog is kind of weird, but like, I would never see like what's going on over there. So then I was kind of like, you know, wowed by the fact that I go down under the water because I thought, hey, I'm a sucker for like water levels, really nice water levels. Uh, and I'll get to that in a moment um, on game number two. But uh, yeah, I really like the idea of like going under the water and then getting very confused why you're suddenly on the other side of the water. But it's because there's a big ledge and that's where the, <laughs> that's where the rest of the level was. Ziki. Thank you for releasing me. Oh, wow. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, some more attack frogs. Also, <laughs> the pig runs through them. It's a nice. Uh, but otherwise, the game's pretty alright. It's got a bunch of cars, and uh, the tracks feel nice. And it's also got Sydney. Sydney has a location done kind of nicely. Uh, for some reason, they modeled the uh, Laguna Seca. Seca? Seca? I think it's Seca. Um, they modeled that and uh, put it under the Brighton Beach chapter of the game, which is uh, certainly not where that track is, but uh, sure, okay. There's a lot of tracks in the game that are very close to real tracks, like the last track in the game is Hockenheim Ring, the um, very certain there's an Abu Dhabi, uh, actually no, there wasn't an Abu Dhabi clone, but there's a, there's a um, Spa Francochon kind of clone, there's a lot of that. I'll tell you what to do with those creatures. Smash them, Spyro! Stamp them out and squish them and squash them! <laughs> uh, huh. How about charge them and flame them? We are dragons, after all. <laughs> he caught out. Uh, oh. There's two chests down there. That would throw me off if I, if I miss those. Um, and that one as well. Wow, I'm missing all of them. Now that's one of, another one of those, actually it's got four dragons, so there's plenty of dragons on this one. Um, but it's also got 500 treasure, so definitely worthwhile to come up here. It's a nifty, like, jump up here though. Just feels kind of neat, like, being on top of a roof. You know, any games where you can be on top of, you know, existing ground. That's what gives 3, 3D games their, uh, their character, and also me not being able to land this jump. There's another one of uh, the charge all the enemies. Ah, oh, I missed the last one. <laughs> That's okay. I want to see if... That's nah, not good. <laughs> That's not going to hit anyone. go. And that should be gold. Ding ding. There you go. Now I can, I, I, I'm just going to glide back onto the, onto the bit. Whoop. And there we go. That's the level. I like the level. It's nice fun. The music is jamming as well. Uh, watch out for the pig who's definitely spawned right here. Or not. I guess not. There we go. Uh, yeah, some real world tracks, uh, which is then interesting because uh, the DLC from this year, uh, last year uh, is a Ayrton Senna uh, DLC. Ayrton Senna is a very famous Formula One driver. Um, and uh, this DLC goes through uh, various stages of his uh, career without really being able to make explicit mention of certain tracks or people or teams even. They didn't get really many of the rights, but they at least got the rights to um, name it and center, and a lot of the tracks in that DLC, which is actually new tracks, uh, modeled a lot closer to actual Formula 1 tracks. Um, they at least put the right uh, countries on them, so you know what they are. Okay, uh, those guys take the second pick for, you know, favorite enemy sound. I. I always like wondered what these guys were. They're monkeys who have skipped leg day so much that they have the most buff arms. They've got these weird claw grips, and then they're just kind of hanging their legs there, because... I don't know. 
Uh, now, kind of confusingly in this level, this is probably one of the most iconic levels for me because of how long I spent as a kid trying to figure it out. But uh, the reason why it's so iconic is because uh, that's, a, that's a fork in the road. There's actually two ways to get to the end of the level. But you want to go down uh, one of these ways. I'm going to go down this way. I forget which way is the fastest way. Actually, yeah, getting the key and then backing out. Because the, the chest for the key is just down here. Saves me a little bit of time backtracking. But, uh, yeah, nah. It's also only a... Th oh, this is 500. Okay. <laughs> I was like, is it only 300? It's 500, nah. Uh... Now, the, the real, like, kicker with this level is that it's Supercharge City. It is the most involved Supercharged level out there. Spyro, if you jump at the end of a Supercharge ramp, you can really go far. I'm all over it. Have you really wanted to go far as even enough to use? One day I'll be able to, to quote that exactly. So, there's the Supercharge. And what you're supposed to do... Oh, no. Never mind. <laughs> There's a ramp over here, which has a whirlwind just magically halfway along, which leads to the beginning of the level. Uh, so it's a little bit confusing there. Um, I'm going to commit to going this way now. Uh, continuing that ramp leads to an actual, like, jump. Uh, you'll see me execute that later, but for now, we'll just leave it there for the moment. Um... I don't know what's with, like, this ledge here. Like, it's on top of the building. It's just all these, like, poles and... There's another one over there. There's actually quite a quite a few of these. Lots of, lots of crashing sounds. Always good. Okay. Now, this is, this is probably the gnarliest jump in the whole game. And this is uh, what took me... Actually, no. I, as a kid, I never even figured this one out. Like, I figured this one out after the, the um, you know, the, the starting days of YouTube. Greetings, Spyro. For an amazing tour of the treetops, don't just stop at one supercharge. <sighs> I don't know why as a kid I never, like, reverse put that knowledge on the, the Wizard's Peak level. Because you were supposed to double up the supercharge on that one. Uh, so what you're encouraged to do is go down this ramp there, but the real, like, tricky thing is to just do a U-turn and get that as a jump. I believe that's how you're supposed to do it. You land on this ledge and you encounter one of very few money thieves in the game. He drops money. And there's also green fire. And there's also the last dragon. Uh, sup Basil, how's it going? That was quite a ride, Spyro. You've learned a lot since you were a young glider. Yeah, well, you could have found an easier spot to get stuck. <laughs> uh, that's good. Uh, yeah, I'm reminiscing of a... Uh... <laughs> this level is infamous in my memory. I don't know if it's, uh... I should really find, like, tier lists of, uh, the Spyro 1 levels. People are either going to love or hate this level, and I'm, like, I'm in both camps. I love supercharging through large enemies. It's good fun. Uh, so, I'm, I'm going to try and clear out these areas, and then uh, commit to the good superchargers. If you're speedrunning, you're going to try and show off this level in a very different way. Uh, but the key thing as a, I guess, from a level point of view, is that you come from this jump... You're landing on this platform here, and then you've got a clear kind of jump angle here, which looks a bit weird, but then you've also got a ramp over there. It's It was probably one of the hardest ones for me to figure out. Uh, make sure you commit to hitting the chest at the end. Very important. Uh, but yeah, no, that, like that... That dragon, that last one on the, the far ledge, that's the trickiest part of the level. Um, the other kind of annoying thing is that you can clearly see the stuff on top of that ledge there. 
but on this ledge here, there's no... There's nothing. There's no way to get up there. You've got a whirlwind, which looks promising. But that whirlwind takes you back onto the ramp, and that's the end of the level there, so... One thing I found kind of interesting about this uh, ramp is that you get supercharged... Oh, I didn't then, but sometimes you get supercharged, like, running down the opposite end. This is... I guess this is a kind of neat level as well, because everyone kind of takes it from a different angle. Sometimes you go forward through, like, this corridor, sometimes you're going backwards. I want to scream... I, I seem to remember some kind of harbor level that was much worse than this. Um, there's a harbor level in... There's, well, there's two harbor levels in the last world, so... Which I'll get to on this stream. This is a finish the game stream, so... If, uh, if there's a level you haven't seen yet, uh... We'll see how it goes. I don't remember any other level being... Um, hard as in a... I can't figure this out. More just a hard as in... Um... It's just tricky. The enemies are in tough spots. Stuff like that. Uh, or sometimes you miss um, gems and they're just somewhere and you, you don't know where. So now I'm going to try and... Uh, oh, I'm not going to chain two jumps because I needed su to supercharge this. My, my route should have done that a bit ago. So let's go back up. This is a kind of interesting one as well. It's like the fact that like you supercharge down there. You're intended to like, you know, you're lured by that chest. Dickish enemy positions, yeah, yeah. But then, like, I don't know, it's kind of freeform. You get to glide to all these, like, weird ledges all over the place. I really want to know, like, was this level designed by one person or a bunch of people? Because I know that there's a bunch of level designers, but sometimes, um, uh, oh, thanks for the vibes, yeah. See, uh, such. Unless you stay in, in which case, uh, hello, such. <laughs> Um, so what you're supposed to do is, yeah, you supercharge off that ledge, then you continue running with the supercharge here. Now you'll see where this corridor leans up, or lines up. It lines up onto this supercharge, so now you get the double supercharge to jump from that ledge. Because you, could, you couldn't single supercharge that ledge, you had to double it. Again, you got another gem egg thief, he's just here. It's a, it was a weird, it's a weird jump, and it's, you know... You got your supercharge ramp not facing quite where you're supposed to go. And there's two ways you can actually get here as well. You can do a, a double charge from that direction as well. And that works as well. Um, definitely, it's a tricky level for me to figure out as a kid. It makes... It, it is pretty genius when I think about it now. Because it's just like... It's just a bunch of random platforms and yet you feel really guided. Well, maybe not really guided, but it feels... Decently intentional. And you've mastered Supercharge by then, so... Uh, let's finish up this hub well, because the boss is there, and the, the balloon is right there, so... Uh, let's knock off both there. Um, there's a mystery key chest... Uh, ...on the other side over here. Uh, there's a pot which you don't go into, unlike the other one. Love these enemies. There we go. Uh, so I might as well mention game number two that I played. Uh, this one was a replay. I played uh, Shadow Warrior from 1997. It's a game that I maybe will stream. I don't have any, like, hard plans. But I enjoy it enough, and it's actually not that long. I think it took me maybe, like, four and a half hours. Maybe five. I kept dying at quick saving a lot, but I felt the third difficulty level was very fair. I never felt like I was immediately dying to things, except for, like randomly big explosions uh but the enemies were decently fair the levels were well paced and had a lot of things going on with them uh for reference as well it's a uh a build engine first person shooter by 3d realms they made two first person shooters 3d realms uh duke nukem 3d and then shadow warrior actually it might have been different people on shadow warrior but it was still within 3d realms so it counts uh, you might know of other games on the build engine, such as Blood or uh, Redneck Rampage, but they weren't developed by uh, people at 3D Realms. They were just developed by people licensing the same engine. Uh, or Ion Maiden, uh, so Ion Fury. Ion Maiden would get very angry about that one. Um, that one is on the engine, it's not uh, quite there. 
It's a fun one gem that's just lingering there. Okay, let's confront the metal head. He's metal, he's got a head. He ticks the boxes. Lots of levels with 500 gems are suddenly like, we're up to 69, nice, percent. But another 500 gems in this level. Do the math, how much, how many gems are there? 1900, 2500 gems. Uh, we've got metal versions of the tiny monkeys. They can either be thrown off the ledge or you can charge them and they make uh, the same sounds as the other metal guys. It's amazing. I love them. <laughs> this level also had like a kind of like cheeky secret. Uh, but there weren't too many weird cheeky secrets in Shadow Warrior. I feel like they, um, they made a much more consistent game but they also did uh, kind of, you know, make the secrets a little more manageable. So there's a lot of, uh, just panels that are clearly different, like they're just actual wall panels, or hey, it's a painting and you just press it, or something like that, or, or just like a wall with, um, you know, cracks on it, you gotta shoot with an explosive weapon. Um, a lot of things are a lot easier to predict. It was like if you play, uh, well, especially Wolfenstein 3D, which is... I guess it's not quite 3D realms. You know, you know what I mean. It, it is 3D realms, but it's, uh, we know. But like, and that is like, nah. That's just any old random wall could be a secret. You don't know. Who knows? It got better over time, and I think Duke Nukem 3D is uh, pretty much the point where you know secrets meant something, and not just like were very very random. Um, it's a weird ledge, by the way, where you like you jump down and you. I don't know, this is a weird, like, track there. That one took me a while as a kid to, to figure out. It's very important that you come here, though, because there's the, uh, chest key. It's fun to get the chest key before you get the... get to the chest itself. No backtracking, you know? We'll get to it, this is because Spyro 2 introduces those pots where you have to literally backtrack the level. Just... <laughs> the mystery pots. Uh, yeah, other than that, Shadow Warrior is fairly decent. Oh, it's got a good railgun. It's got a really good railgun. So, uh, it's definitely a fun, uh, fun game to play. Um, would recommend. It's actually, it is still on Steam as well. Um, interestingly, uh, the, so the 3D Realms version exists, which just, I, I didn't actually run the 3D Realms version. Maybe I should. Um, but I've also got the Devolver version, Shadow Warrior Redux, which came out just before I just... Mm, I didn't even get the dragon. That's going to be kind of annoying. It's going to be all these enemies just lingering. Ugh. Oh, I mean... Ugh. Um... Yeah. I don't know why, like, both 3D Realms and Devolver... I guess Devolver had... Wait, did Devolver even have the Duke Nukem license at all, like, themselves? They had the rights to publish Duke Nukem 3D Megaton Edition, uh, and then Shadow Warrior Classic Redux is a similar, sorry, a similar, um, port of the game, uh, which Devolver then kept the Shadow Warrior license because they published the actual Shadow Warrior reboot from 2013, which now has two sequels. And I hear Shadow Warrior 3 is really short for the price. I have not played... I played some of Shadow Warrior um, 2013, but I've never played too much of it, so... I can't tell you how it is. This big robot is all charged up to meet you. Attacking the power pole should disrupt its power supply. I feel like you didn't need this guy to explain the boss. But, sure, there's power poles, uh, half of, some of the time they're green, some of the time they're red. Don't charge him when they're red, charge him when they're green. Watch out for his weird little blue laser. If you defeat him before, uh, he throws all the monkeys at you, he, uh, well, all the monkeys just suddenly die up there. Uh, fan of the remake? Yeah, I, I don't know, sometimes a remake is good, sometimes it's not as good. Um... It's definitely, the, the Shadow Warrior reboot is, it's certainly a reboot. It doesn't, it, it doesn't and shouldn't replace the original. Um, 
the original is kind of interesting because it is so short. Uh, and we've got a big environment here. Uh, let's figure out <laughs> where I'm going. So boom, boom, boom. There's like 10 of these poles. Oh, there we go. Watch out for his blue laser. Oh, can I get it? Nice. <laughs> he's, a, he's a fun boss. He only takes two hits and you barely engage with him. Greetings, blub. Uh, no bug park. Bug park. Uh, oh, I already did the bug park. Uh, you, it, it's... Oh, I don't think the VOD will be on YouTube. So, sorry, on Twitch. It would be on YouTube if you missed the bug park. Uh, but yeah, no, that, that whole game is generally pretty, pretty done now. Um, maybe I'll, I'll pop in the sequel at some point later on. Uh, or another game. I used to never be able to land that jump consistently, and I still don't, but I got it first try, so I'm very happy because that's usually a painful one for me. Um, I am amazed as well. Uh, so the only other things is just, yeah, making sure that you get the gems that are sitting on top of this, which is, I think, the monkeys. And then, uh, let's back out. I wanted to fight the boss first. So if I back out and run up here, we got a lovely, fun, uh, series of ledges sitting around the outside of here. Watch out for the vomit waterfall. It's obscuring a wonderful secret. Watch the key, round and round it goes. Into the slot, nobody knows. Well, I know. It's in the slot. So, and that should be it. 500. Easy money. Easy money. And that's that. That's uh, the beast maker's world. Definitely, yeah, it's not like crazy cryptic. Treetops is definitely one that like gets me uh, confused. Not sure if I missed last week. Uh... No, the bug, the bug park was um, uh, the third level in that game. So last week I played uh, more Spyro, and then the week before was uh, the space park. And then the week before that was the bug park. So if you, if you miss some of that, it's all on YouTube. So don't worry uh, about Twitch getting rid of the VODs. You can, you can watch back on that later. Uh, I've even got the playlist on my channel, so... And if you if you missed the first half of Sparrow, that's also on YouTube, so that's that's why I put them on YouTube. It's just because because you know <laughs> I don't play every game all the time. Uh, here we are, the Dreamweavers world, where it's kind of like the uh, the Magic Crafters, but not quite. The weird thing going on is that there's a guy with a shrink ray. It looks like a shrink ray, but it's actually a flip between shrinking growth rays. He'll sometimes get the same guy. Or maybe you won't. Uh, it's not too bad for these guys. That's what the bug park can play. Um, I sometimes mix the bug park and the dino park in my mind because they kind of look a little similar. Um, so you got to watch out that you don't uh, charge the metal guys when they're big because you can't defeat them when they're big. One thing you can do is I want to actually see if I can nail this. You can actually charge them like on the frame that they're big. Uh, well. Maybe not these guys. I don't know if you can. I'm going to try and time it. Nope. Oh, there's a little, like, claw arms. Nope. Am I just going to, like, kill myself trying to attempt this? Maybe. Pretty confident with catching my streams first half second of Super Mario Galaxy. That's okay. Like, there's no, no judge. No nothing. Like, you know, you watch what you want to. And, uh, if you enjoy it, then, you know, that means, that means a lot to me, because I really like, uh, making stuff that other people enjoy. Even if it is as simple as something like just I'm playing the game, it's like, yeah, I mean, people will enjoy it. That's good. Latif. Welcome to the Dreamweavers, young one. While chasing Nasty's minions in this world, you must expect the unexpected and prepare for what is not there. What does that mean? Who knows? Um, I will say, like, one thing that I am pleasantly surprised by since I've been doing the streams is, uh, like, picking 
nice YouTube analytics that I look at and I go, ah, I'm actually doing like a decent job. Like, I, I used to like do all these like let's plays and stuff, just pre-recorded, like I'd record it on my own time. The guy with laser does not shoot these two guys. Um, and uh, all those videos would get like 10 views, 20 views maybe. And then all these stream VODs, like the last week's Spyro VOD hit 50 views, and I'm like, that's, that means something to me. Uh, is he gonna make all of them big? Nah, okay, I guess I'm not gonna be able to show off, uh, making one guy big. And charging into him. It can be done. It doesn't make a cool sound, but sure. Uh, but yeah. Now I will say on the Spyro vid, uh, YouTube's got their uh, likes dislikes disabled, but uh, it's got one dislike and zero likes. But some of the other bots have one like and zero dislikes, so I don't know. So you flame that guy and then you can get access to the cannon. Uh, very important that you make all the, the big metal dudes not big. So get that guy, get that guy. Now they're little dudes. And there was another big metal guy over there. There you go, <laughs> accurate enough. It's like the other cannon, but not. Kind of interesting as well, because I don't think there's any cannons in non-hub levels. Nicely done. I'll be done when I've toasted that nasty Nork. Nice. Uh. Yeah, I don't think the cannons are in any other level. But yeah, YouTube analytics. Uh. Always a. Uh, a tool you gotta, you know, take with a grain of salt. As a small creator, it's nice to know. Uh, modern YouTube has kind of made people forget the context how many people... Yeah, like 50, 50 views, uh, they're not the whole video as well, but like I think the average view time is like six minutes, which sounds very little for a two hour stream, but then it's just like, you know, six times, sorry, six minutes times 50 people, or 50 views is 300 minutes, which is five hours. Old YouTube, you had uh, 100,000 views. The it was like the top of YouTube. In this world are invincible, but that does not mean they shouldn't be attacked. Sounds all right to me. The fools, uh, dude. I I actually wish, um, cause uh, <laughs> like I still my new videos still compete kind of hard for uh the like you know the most viewed videos of my past like week. Or, or month, I usually look in the, the 28 hour window. Um, by the way, the fools will come up in, the, in the, another level, but yeah, you flame them, and then they turn into a clock, and then something triggers somewhere around the, the world, for, but only for a little bit. Um, but yeah, like, I've got a, a Toy Story 3 video, I don't know how, it still gets um, a couple of hundred views every month, and it's, it's legit at like 600,000 views. No idea how. No idea how. Perhaps one day I should return to Toy Story 3. Do my wrongs right. Uh, something like that. Uh, 50? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like... Like, it's not healthy to compare yourself to super mega channels, because super mega channels do, like... You know, they do so many things to try and, like, bump themselves up and... Oh my gosh, why is he... Why is he going so quickly? Alright, so here's a pro tip. Here's a pro tip. Oops. Skip the first platform. Just go straight for the second one. Easy. 20 recurring people. Yeah, yeah. It's not easy to know if it's the same 20 people, but definitely, like, uh, I think the best part is, you know, I, I play a new game, and particularly Theme Park World. I play a new game and suddenly I still have the view account. That's, that's really, like, powerful to me. That's a, that's a real powerful metric. Um, if you look IRL, 20 people regularly doing something together is already hard, and that's usually for something uh, interacting with hobbies. Yeah, exactly. Um, this level shows up in the uh, demo, so uh, you want to get both the lamps and the, uh, the lighthouses and the chests. You just go straight for the chests, do a bit of a loop. Uh, one of the lamps, lighthouses, is really low, and I always keep missing it. I think it's this one. I'm gonna go up for that one, and then back down for this one. Yeah, exactly. And I'm not, I don't want to say like, you know, oh, I'm in it for like ad money or revenue, because you don't make much ad money anyways. It's, it's like, it's not only the fact that you have like a low number of views, but also that, uh, 
YouTube just doesn't give you as much money per view when you don't get that many views. It's a vicious cycle, but yeah, it's fine. Like, you know, you, you do it because you have a fun time making the videos. And that, you know, potential that you've made someone stay. Even if they don't even say it. Just like, oh, like, you know, one guy somewhere will say, hey, you really made my day. Or something like that. And you could just extrapolate, like, a lot of people probably mean it. Like, I, I don't leave a comment on every single video, but, you know, oh, every video I watch. But, you know, I do I do really appreciate everything I, I do watch. Uh, except for, uh, <laughs> this is a wonderful segue, um, YouTube is getting worse for small content in many aspects. Of yeah, yeah. It's, it is an interesting, like, competition now because I, I always say this, if you search anything on YouTube, you'll get t 10 results of really popular videos and then 10 results of videos that are, like, brand new. Like, if you legit type Spyro the Dragon playthrough on YouTube, you might find my video in there. Just last week's VOD. The algorithm is busted. Um, you know, yeah, yeah, I, I mean, I personally don't use the front page and, and I always find like, this is a tricky one for me to really digest is any, um, any kind of analytics when it's not a system I use myself. So like, um, like if you do like SEO stuff, um, which I always thought was like a myth and it is a little bit, but it, <laughs> it's still, it's still kind of there. Um. So this is the level with the fools, except this time it's now got enemies that eat you. Cool. Uh, like you said before, I could type the search and similar videos on YouTube. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I just get complete junk now. Um, and, and I was going to say, uh, one thing I got as a suggested video, which I can say is complete junk, is Looper. I believe they're a gaming media website. Uh, have a new top 98 games of all time ranked. And it's like, it, that's exactly the kind of like clickbait, you know, like, I, I, get, I guess I get attracted with. Uh, algorithm, I search for something, don't suggest me something cool. Yeah, oh, it's... I think the worst part is when YouTube recommends stuff you've already watched. The enemies here can be quite frightening, but you should watch the fools. I'd rather blame the fools. Now you're thinking. <laughs> I love his voice change. It's just like, woo, 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 woo. now you're thinking. <laughs> it's absolutely dramatic. Uh, I love these cupids with the arrows as well. I love this level. This level is really cool. Just the structure of it as well. It's it's this nice like ring that goes around the central area and you slowly work your way to the top. Now, sometimes the fools don't automatically go down as well, so you want to make sure that you're on top of it at times. Uh, they should use two algorithms. Yeah, I I wouldn't mind as well if like you could switch between algorithms as well, because like ultimately what YouTube wants to do is give me the most relevant content to what I want to watch, which you know ultimately, um, yeah, one for main page, one for search. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for releasing me. Oh, thanks for releasing him. Uh, probably have two algorithms. Here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There'd be different algorithms for Google search and, and other elements. Oh, my gosh. These guys are working their way around. Um, but on top of that, I I feel like they'd always have, like, mul oh. um, they'd have multiple versions. They'd usually be, like, canary testing or A-B testing, however you, you want to say it, where it's like some people might be getting newer versions of the algorithm silently and they don't know about it. Um... The reason Google became big in the first place was because they had, uh, at time, a revolutionary search algorithm. Yeah, exactly. I'm not too sure if PageRank was a thing when Google took off, but definitely, like, the biggest thing with Google is that, like, um, in the past you had directories. You had- oh my goodness, I'm not having fun time with these guys. Like, uh, you'd literally have people curate a list of websites and put them under categories, and then Google was like, yo, we're gonna match words that people type, and it's gonna happen automatically, and then we're gonna have bots that crawl around on the internet and figure out what links exist, and then figure out that people are clicking on certain links to basically, like, know how to, you know, put them higher on the, the you know, search results, and that makes so much, um... You know, I think you just might be the dragon to defeat Nasty Nork! That's me, all right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, th I think 
page rank is definitely like what took it off. I'm not too sure the time on that, but um, yeah, definitely. I remember studying page rank at uni and it's just like, oh, it's crazy. Like how well it works. The only thing is that it's, uh, it, it, you have to implicitly solve an equation. So uh, if, only, if only Google had a piece of software out there that could uh, monitor how people clicked on search results. Cough, cough. Um, I love the, the fact that you get to the top of the level and then it's like, oh look, there's this little, like, little hidey hole down here. Uh, I always double check up there. I'm a professor in machine learning subject that has to go talk to me about depth, uh, in depth, how it works and why it was so revolutionary and allowed Google to basically do an insanely fast rise. Yeah, exactly. And actually, as well, like, I mean, Google, it's not the only company out there that, you know, got a massive amount of investor money, which always helps, but uh, in particular, you know, Google was able to create a product that was revolutionary uh, and then, you know, ride successes based on that. Which is a bit of a shame, because it's like, the algorithms are just kind of like, skewed now for heavy monetization, when as, whereas original page rank, you know, is purely, like, general consensus driven. Uh, this is a real cheeky room, because you gotta, like, run past these two dudes. Uh, but like, now it's like, you know, the moment you chuck, like, people paying for advertising, and, uh, advertisers kind of, uh, stealing the, st <laughs> stealing the, uh, how do I phrase it? They use bots to cheese, cheese the algorithms a bit. Everyone does it now. And now it's like, uh, barely anything's like human driven now. It's just driven by whoever's got the most like machine to run bot, uh, bots on anything. The Pixiv model. What, what is the Pixiv model? Uh, I, I'm not a, I'm only like a, like a Pixiv Noah. I don't actually like use Pixiv a ton. Uh, the Japanese site for lots of good hentai stuff. Ah, yes. Yes. High, high art. <laughs> Thanks, Spyro. I'd love to help you catch Nasty, but I'd really hate being trapped in Christum again. Don't worry. The only one who's going to be trapped is him. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think if you've got a pro account on that site, you can search a bit more um, accurately. But, like, yeah, a, a pure by date by date is one of the like you know it's one of the like safest and best things um it does also mean that like you know sometimes you're perusing through a lot of junk um like if i was on twitter and i had to view everyone's tweets by date not just the people i follow but like everyone in fact actually yeah if you search any twitter trend and then you just sort by latest oh you get a lot of just not particularly useful takes. Um, but then it's like, it's weird, because it's like, you get the, the Fediverse, and it's not actually that bad. Oh, it is kind of bad at times, but it's not, it's not too bad. Um, Thank you for releasing me. So, make a Google Premium that uses a non-monetized algorithm. I, yeah, I wouldn't mind if, like, you could opt out of monetized stuff if you had paying models. I'd also prefer if you had free models. This jump is fun, because it's the fact that, like, that's the little canyon that you're on. In fact, that, like, whole island is just, like, they're on that half of the level. It's just a level that's, like, so much larger than it initially, you know, it initially, uh, looks, seems, is perceived. Something, I don't know. And if I had a gush about this game so much, I would, that would be one thing I'd say, is the fact that the levels, you know, they open up. They never feel like, you know, like you're just introduced to a bunch of things. They're very well structured, very well paced, and they always feel very approachable to you. Like you don't feel like you're, you know, you're leaving stuff behind. Which is what I'm gonna say in uh, five seconds if I don't have all the gems after blowing up that one chest all the way over there. People would of course roast them for it, but companies that have employees uh, that for the work need to look up stuff as well as uh, individuals like research, uh, market research, etc. They do see no questions asked. Yeah, exactly. And I, I wouldn't mind um, any website that uh, would let you tweak the algorithm in various ways. I mean, ultimately your website... Oh, I'm missing 20. 
20. Wow, 20. Okay, well, uh... Do I go back to the very beginning or do I take a, a lap around... I'm gonna take a lap around the, the side area again because I don't really feel like I would miss stuff in the main route up to the top of the level. Uh, think about if Google Branch, uh, branched it went that way as in the first place not called premium, people would roast them less. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely, um, ways to market it poorly. Um, a lot of the things get branded as premium when it's like they feel like they're basic features. It's like how Twitter, like, added an edit button and then it's only available to people who pay for Twitter's subscription. Ah, oh, oh, there it is. Um, Twitter's a fun site. You can make fun of it a lot because, a, like, they catered so hard to advertisers that they literally have... I, I think they have literally lost market to free competitors, to open source competitors. Uh, partially myself included. Um, but I'd say also generally it's like, yeah, like, Twitter is not really growing as a website. And everything new that Twitter does is barely for anything there. Uh, be a net profit firm. I some yeah, I sometimes feel as well as like a lot of these sites. Like Google makes money implicitly through uh, usage, which is something that so many websites don't get the luxury of doing. Uh, Want to know what you use at work? Bing. I think I use DuckDuckGo at work, um, and uh, I use a, uh, a search engine. A, was it a Skier XNG? I don't know how to say. I think it's a search engine. Uh, I use that at home, and then usually do the bangs to, to get to Google Bing. Bing is surprisingly good. It really blatantly advertises to you in places, but I also feel like the the more obvious advertising just feels more comforting than subtle advertising. I don't know. This level of Lofty Castle, I like it. It's good fun. This world is just good fun in general. You got these weird chicken things. <laughs> You're playing them off the ledges. And then you got lots of whirlwinds all over the place in this level. Alright, someone I I asked this question earlier in a previous stream, and I'm gonna try and ask it again. What's the what's the technique when you've got a rhythm where you're playing like Okay, so it's in 3-4, and then you play three minims. The snare is like this. The drums are like this. It's playing one, three, two, one, two, three, two, one, yeah, something like that. It's like, it's across the beat there. Across the bar line. I forgot the name of the, the phrase. Uh, maybe he's trying to come from mostly... <laughs> Mostly bad to almost entirely. Yeah, Twitter's got like a a real a real contentious user base. Um, separating the user base from its features, Twitter does okay, but then it's like it hasn't really done much. And they did a UI change that doesn't make any sense. Like legit, I I just realized Twitter's 2013 UI, and I was like, man, there is more going on there. Um, uh, it's it's not quite syncopation. It might be syncopation, but there's like a specific Fairies term. Are always on your side, Spyro. Uh, so like the song is in three four. One two three. One two three. One. It's it's in three four, but the snare is on two, one, three, two. Like it as in the 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 drums are emphasizing like different beats between two bars as if it were in two because usually you you know you'd have a beat that's in three so it'd be like one two one oh, oh. I'm, I'm trying to forget the drum beat right now so hold on it'd be like like that would be a beat in three but it's not in three it's It's, it's two. It's in two. I, I, I really, oh, I'm tearing my hair out over, like, trying to figure out the, the phrase here. I really want to look this up. I really want to just, like, pause and look it up, but I can't, like... So, a snare that does sync up on a 4-4 four -four rhythm that starts at the same time as the main 3-4. Yeah, yeah. I guess this will be, like, a 2-4, because it's not... 
um, like it's not, it's not really four beats, it'd, it'd just be two, but uh, I love this bit as well of the level, by the way, where you just, um, uh, you gotta free the three fairies, and then the three fairies go onto this platform and then they suddenly turn into sparklies. You don't have to drop down here. You do have to do it for gems, but you don't have to do it in order to keep walking on. Um, yeah, I I always wonder whether the stuff I learned in like HSC music like are even actual terms or whether they're just made up for the for the purpose of the HSC. Um, I, I do swear they had a term for that on the. Um, still though, it's an it's an interesting musical technique. Uh, definitely something that uh, a drummer would come up with. <laughs> like, oh man. I don't, I don't see too many guitarists doing this. That's a fun jam as well. It's got a nice walking bass. Oh, I missed that one guy. You're supposed to swing around and get all the fairies, which I got all the fairies, but I didn't get the first guy in the balloon. Yeah, that, there's bound to be a name. Listen, if I... Ooh! <laughs> now you know what happens when he dies. Uh, okay, legit. Uh, when I upload the VOD, I'm going to pop the name on screen right now. Or... <laughs> or if I don't have the name, then... Uh, whoops. Uh, basically, it sounds like having two parallel rhythms sounds pretty... Ah, Spyro, thanks. Supercharge will get you to new places here in Lofty Castle too. See where it takes you. Uh two okay, I just typed two four B on three four meter. I'm trying to expect What's the Oh no, there's no Nah, can't find it. Oh well. <sighs> well, yes, there is more supercharged in this level. You can't go without it. So run around and jump. There you go, and then you glide to this one ledge. It's just a ledge, but there's a bunch of gems on it. And some fireworks. A lot of good gems, though. It's a short and sweet super ju uh, supercharge jump. Also, that whole bit over there is just so you can get a, a key. And some gems, I guess. How many dragons are in this level? Three. AFK for a moment. Thank you for releasing me. <laughs> Funny number dragons. Uh, also, I guess, just for note, there are 80 dragons in the game. There are 11 left. They definitely go... Uh, very light on the dragons in the last world, but, uh, yeah, I feel like I might be in the last hour of the game, because, <laughs> I mean, what have we got after this level? There's a, um, there's another big level. There's a boss level. I actually want to see if I can get this guy with the, the propellers. It's going to be kind of awkward. You can! Nice! <laughs> Um, but yeah, there's a, there's another level after this one, uh, which is one that... Actually, I, I guess, uh, if Treetops is Supercharged City, then I don't know what the next level is, man. The next level's crazy. Um, and then, uh, there's a boss level, and then we've got the last world. Oh, yeah, 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 you can use... So, this one, this is definitely, I think, a good spot for one. If you line up the flame, the thing goes up, and it crashes down, oh, that, it's not far enough. Oh, I should've used on that guy, maybe. Um, and it will kind of lock on to an enemy that's, like, in that direction. Um, yeah, if you watch my, uh, last week's stream, uh, there's a dragon egg that's in, um, was it High Caves? And, uh, it's like the, the thief's running around a little lake, uh, but you can use one of these to just hit him without having to, like, try and chase him around there. And it's so much easier. And they put three of them next to each other, so it almost feels like they want you to do that. But 
they're also kind of awkwardly <laughs> close up against the walls. I don't know if they did. Um, but it's a real fun mechanic. I like, I like it. And this game's full of, like, if I wanted to be very retrospective about the whole thing, I really love all the little, just, mechanical details. They're not really world details. Like, I mean, this game's a bunch of floating platforms and picking up treasure that's all over the place. It's, it's like, it's not the craziest, like, world-building game, but what did the treasure mean? What are the little ways that they make the treasure stand out? How about the fact that there is, like, like, hold on, th this is a perfect example. You can see there's a little, like, the chest that you got a flame and the gem pops out, but you can see it's also sparkling a little bit. When the chests are out of the draw distance, they still sparkle. Sometimes. Sometimes. Please illustrate my point game, otherwise I'm going to be very upset. <laughs> Maybe they don't. Ah, oh, they were doing it earlier. Maybe they'll do it if I get rid of these ones. So if I go back onto the ledge... Like, maybe they were just closer gems in view. Um, but I, I love this idea of, like... Uh, are they gonna maintain it, or...? No, okay, my brain's going crazy. I always thought, like, the... The, you know, gems, no matter how far away they were in the level, the sparkle would always appear. And that way, then you'd always be able to find the gems from miles away in the level. Uh, speaking of finding the gems miles away in the level, there is one set of gems I never went back for. <laughs> Whoops. Um, but yeah, there's just like, there's so many little things. And then I always flash back to, yeah, me as a three-year-old, basically going, Hey, like, I understood this game. This game made sense to me. How? Because like, I didn't, I could barely like, read. I always find that's amazing when a game can teach someone who doesn't read, like, the, a way to play the game. Kids understand games before they, they know language, so there's something universal to, to how games work. Um, maybe a psychologist can could give me a real proper answer on that one, but... Um, like, he, even, like, you know, I always say, my parents were gutsy to get me, like, Pokemon as when I was, like, turning three. Again, really didn't know how to read, um, but I could interpret what the game's, like, writing meant over time. And then... Uh, no unskippable tutorial. Yeah, that as well, like, I didn't even need to, you know... You, like, you get the dragons, uh, that you rescue, giving you, uh, tips as you go along, and, uh, you're not even going to mention the Japanese version that's literally got signs that tell you how to play the game on top of the dragons as well. I don't know why the Japanese version is like that. If you, if you want to see something cursed, you look up the Japanese version of this game, because uh, also the camera's pulled back for some reason. I don't know why, and I want to say they gave Sparks an extra hit, or he changes a different color. It's something something very weird. They didn't maintain all those changes for the sequels, they just kind of... Uh, the sequels are a bit more normal, but this first game, I don't know why the Japanese version is very bizarre. And it's weird, because, like, it's not... It's intentional why they did that, but I don't know why. Because, like... Uh, Japanese versions of these games are not, like wildly different to the American running versions. Nope, nope, I, I started up too slow. Okay, nope, I don't think, I don't think I can charge these guys, I'm not gonna try. We're gonna try and charge this guy. Nope, okay. <laughs> it was worth a try, it was worth a try. Now I'm going right back to the beginning of the level. Ooh, uh, that was, uh, oh boy. Uh, if you had the pocket station, oh yes, yes, with the little, the little, yeah, pocket station. Oh boy, that's one I got to experience. Haunted towers. I think people have a love-hate relationship with this level. I love it. I got all the dragons in the last level. Yeah, yeah. So one thing that's uh, kind of spooky about this level is that uh, you got the, <laughs> these, these guys with grenades. Uh, they've kind of reused the wizards, but they've recolored them, and then you got these 
the knights, you go close to them and you're like, oh boy, I ain't going anywhere near that. <laughs> it's the most intimidating thing in the world. Seeing the knight pull off his helmet and start trying to whack you with it. But, what do you get? Well, if you come in this room, this guy's getting, this gal's getting a bit harassed, but rescue her and she uh, rewards you with uh, something that uh, you won't really see nowadays in video games, and that's a uh, Love interest with no no strings attached. Use it to flame all the the big the big dudes. Uh, there's not too many big dudes in this beginning part. I usually clear out the beginning part before I uh, go across that gap because you don't need to come back here otherwise. What's the name of the level? Haunted Towers. How many towers are there in the level? <laughs> I think there's like one. There's, that, there's one tower. There are oh, not. There's two of them. There's two towers. They predated Lord of the Rings by a moment. It's a different trilogy of games that came out uh, where each entry was one year apart. I'm amazed they even made all these games one year apart. Like I, I understand that, uh, you know, the engine is fairly similar. The, the mild improvements they did to the engine over time. Um, you know, it makes sense, and, uh, but it's like, I don't know, Spyro 2 is fairly different to this game. Hey Spyro, all dragons know there's magic in a fairy's kiss. See what it can do to your power of flame. Goodbye, funny number. I'll miss you. Um, yeah, this level certainly milks the, uh, the fairy kiss. In fact, I think it might be the last level with the fairy kiss. Uh, I have to say, I'm in the hate party. The towers are haunted. You think you can make them a bit spookier? I mean, they got they got wizards. I don't think there's a single ghost enemy in a Spyro game. Uh, hello, back. Give me some skeletons or something. Exactly. So let the fairy kiss you, and try and get every single metal object that's in this path. I don't think I don't think I could stop every single one of them. Ah, <laughs> I love the. I th actually think is this one dead because I killed one of the the wizards like a bit too soon, so he didn't he didn't have time to make that guy alive. Nice. Uh yeah. Usually I take two guys on on this. You gotta be a bit careful. You gotta be a bit careful. Then they, they stop putting fences all over the levels. Uh, it's, Terrible how the act of going away usually results, uh, turns people into back. Uh, it happens. Nothing's worse than coming back from sleep. Oh, really? Coming back from sleep and suddenly you're awake. Ugh. Or hungry. Hunger is worse. Very kiss. Good old fairy kiss. Uh, <laughs> this is probably the worst part of the game. Trying to run back and get this guy. Yes, I know. I know what what's later at the level, but you don't need it now. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. All right. So this is what I absolutely love about this level: the fact that like you got this weird slope here, and then. Got these like steps, you know. Makes you feel like this area is really large. And then you go inside. And this is a supercharge ramp, and you're just intended to just line up these like superchargers. Oops, oops. That one's a bit of. Uh Actually I don't need to, to supercharge. Yeah. So you, you only need to subtract through that first door. I'm talking about hunger, there is a mission Hitman 3. Hold your horns! Here comes Spyro! Patience, little one. You'll soon have the opportunity to battle the one who matters most. Nasty Nork. Good nasty good Nork. Uh, I don't know why Hitman 3 in my mind uh, registered Hitman contracts and not, <laughs> not the, the newest one. Uh, there's another guy. I, I love. Again, how intimidating is this? You're like, oh, I'm, I'm just gonna, oh, I'm, I'm just gonna go past you, and <laughs> he doesn't let you go. You have 20 seconds until you die. Uh, refresh each time you kill somebody. Katana. I did play the 2016 
of Hitman, so uh, hardwired to use a ninja out in the level. Nice. Uh, so you get a fairy kiss here as well. Lots of money. Uh, I'm going to use it to destroy this individual. And I'm going to get more kisses. To be honest, I actually... I, okay, I, I know we were saying like sometimes the reboots don't capture the feeling of the original. I think the Hitman 2016 reboot is actually like exactly what I thought Hitman was going to be. Uh, the first Hitman is absolutely atrocious, I'll say. It's not, it's not that bad, but there's a lot of like combat only sequences. I, I could not figure out for the life of me how to not do it without combat. And then, on top of that, the combat is not very good or accurate. It, it works, but sure. Um, Hitman 2 is a lot better. Hitman Contracts is more of the same. Uh, Blood Money is fairly good. I didn't mind Absolution. I think some people do, but I didn't mind it. Uh, I also play Hitman Go. It's not as good as Lara Croft Go. So. Uh, I also love this. So you go past this one guy into an arena of some sorts, and then... Uh, spitting, spitting the magic dust, but fortunately there's a fairy in here. Uh, yeah, blood, blood money is certainly, yeah, what the games should be, or should have been. There's so many different ways that you could tackle enemies in blood money, um, which is something that I can't say about the first. In fact, like, yeah, one problem with the earlier games is that, um, there weren't a lot of, like, set-piece kills? I feel like the set-piece kills are kind of necessary. You want to be able to drop a chandelier on someone, not just like, they're in this room, just kind of sneak your way to them. And yeah, yeah, not not relying on the, the pistols, because the hour's kind of one thing, is that there was a bit, maybe, yeah, a bit too much reliance on just, it's a, it's a third person shooter. Um, it is also a good redemption, sorry. So here's the tricky thing. And this is, this is probably the most gnarliest super jump, like, route in this game. You have to run down this hill, go through here, lean right, jump back across here, and up this ramp. The ramp from the very beginning. This is, it's the most amazing, like, supercharge, like, route. Um, been brought up, uh, Contracts, Hitman 2, uh, the original, and Absolution. Those were the five games. You've become a master of the supercharge. Great work. Yeah, yeah. I, I, like, I mean, there's some quirks with the the the, uh, the reboot trilogy, but it's also like, I mean, mechanically, the levels are really good, and you know, they have exactly what you want out of Hitman, which is, you know having so many different ways of taking out your enemies. It does mean that, uh, if you're, um, yeah, if, if you're just kind of start to finish in the game, you might not find as much value out of it, but certainly it's like, you know, there's so many little fun things to, to figure out. Uh, by the way, as well, you try and climb up these ledges and the wizard's making all these dudes. And if you, if you fail here, this guy doesn't even try and kill you because he knows he's the last guy. So you have to drop down and I believe you have to go back out to the dragon. I think you gotta, like, touch the dragon's pedestal. And then everyone's, like, falling asleep again. And that's how you can take another stab at, like, this run. It's a kind of interesting sequence of things. Just here, but sure. Whoa. There we go. If you can kill the, the wizard, there's a fairy. She's in a gold dress this time. This fairy's kiss lasts for the entire level. It will never go off, and that's why I was saying, oh, I know I know. later in the level if I wanted to kill those guys without having to let the fairy kiss run out. So now, if you had trouble getting any of the, the metal things earlier, now you can just breeze through, get them all. Uh, finish the mission, not even got the bad situation of being stuck in one place without uh, possibility to hide. All the guards coming at you in waves. In Paris, the first mission in Hitman 2016 in the attic. Uh, so so many enemies only survive because uh, that place is actually good for combat. I guess I do really like how, like, 
the fallback is generally like it does work. It's just uh, it's always something nice about doing it right. So there you go, 500 out of 500, and then you just drop through there and you're back into the the lower level. But yeah. It's a fairly neat level when you see the supercharge, but it plays on that fairy kiss mechanic pretty pretty nicely, this level. Very good fun. I'd give it a 10. I enjoy it. <laughs> you do die quickly, yeah. Well, unless you're playing like the journalist difficulty. Why would you play the game on the journalist difficulty? I will say, like... Uh, I think one of the Hitmans, I think Absolution, it's like one of the difficulty levels just hides all the UI entirely. And I always get like a little bit allured by playing a game on the hardest difficulty sometimes if I like find some of the other ones a bit easier. Um, but yeah, I was like, I don't know man, hiding the UI. It's like, am I, am I going too easy by having UI or am I going too hard by not having UI? You can never truly tell. Five guys that come at you in the same spot, you can win if they all have pistols and you have pistols. If they have heavy weapons and you have pistols, you're probably dead. Confronting Jacques, or Jack Jacques, as I'd always refer to it. Uh, this song is apparently so good, Stuart Copeland put it on his Best of Stuart Copeland album. I don't know if it exactly is the best uh, song off this game, but... Certainly a very representative song. It has my favorite enemies in the game, and I flamed one of them just then, but uh... Oh, let's get the full... Uh, I love these metal guys. They're just chilling, but they're usually like on ledges for some reason. But no, it's this enemy! He's got a little flower! He's clapping, he's happy, and he's gonna give it to me. Give me the flower. Oh, <laughs> he gave me a punch. I have been rejected. Uh, you have heavy weapon, they go through five of stretch. Probably die because, uh, well you do regen health, it takes a while. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of nice things about, um, yeah, the, the reboot trilogy that I really liked. What was my favorite level from that first game? I'm probably gonna go with the Paris level. The Paris level is pretty good. Actually, I like the, um, was it Thailand? The one with the, the twin hotels. That one also was pretty neat. I like that one. Ah, uh, oops. Eh, nope. <laughs> and he's gone... there. <laughs> you gotta make sure you get him before he even, like, comes up the ledge. Uh, so I like going around this way in the level just because uh, you work your way around to this ledge, so you don't have to go back up. Um, it's another one of those, there's two paths, but the other paths just takes, like, the long way around the level. So if you just want to beat the boss, you just go up here and, and you, you know, you just turn right. Well, let's go the long way. So, this is a kind of interesting fool here, because you got to flame him. Which lowers this... The far fool lowers that one. It's a very tricky spot. It's a very tricky one to figure out, but it works. Uh, favorite track in the original Spyro Thank Trilogy? Thank you for releasing me! Uh, oh boy. Um... I'm just gonna say Wizard Peak. I'm surprised that one's not more representative given that Stuart Copeland reused that one, but I'm probably gonna go with Wizard Peak. Um, there's probably something, uh, the, um, there's one in Spyro 2 that's probably like, one of the speedways in Spyro 2 is like really nice. Right. So this whole area is just for gems, because you know, boss level, only two dragons. Well, actually, there, sh there should really only be one dragon in a, in a boss level. I don't know why they put another one over there. Why not? Um, almost all the maps are at least good. Details have for the map will do the emphasis on the bottom of the boss level. Then we make the circle back to Spyro. I have a special relationship to the maps in the only 3D games. Uh, and those empty levels feel both empty, uh, but interesting when you come across a few details that did put in for a notable the progression of 3D Mario games. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, you just saw me play through, uh, well, Galaxy, uh, on my channel. Oh! That was my Facebook message, that wasn't yours. I swear I closed down my browser. I swear. That's gonna get real annoying if that keeps happening. Uh, I love these enemies as well, because it's the one time in the game I actually slow down when I'm gliding. You can, you can hold down as far as slows down. 
64 The Sunshine of the Galaxy and Odyssey. More and more details. Yeah, yeah. And I always found it's like, it's very interesting as well because 64 and Galaxy are very abstract. They don't, like, they consist of a bunch of platforms but don't exactly build world, whereas Sunshine and Odyssey do. Uh, sometimes one of these jumps throws me off. Uh, should casually put Discord pings here. I, I should put Discord pings. I'm starting to have, like, Matrix notifications and, like, well, I, I haven't shown up on stream, but it's like... I did have a Discord call in one of my streams. I can't remember which stream it was, but I remember someone called me directly. Um, that was amazing. Uh, Sunshine is the- true, Sunshine has abstract levels, but the main levels are... Less abstract, they're not entirely like the most realistic things in the world, but... Uh, let's get both- oh. Let's get both of these guys. We've got a tiered- a tiered cake. And the top tier runs out, um... Well, I was gonna say it runs out decently quickly, but, uh, that's... That's a bit far of a jump, and that was a- I, my- my blood just boiled just then. Oop, there we go. Uh, yeah, there's always, like, I mean, like, I, I guess, yeah, in, in the context of a lot of, a lot of games now, it's like, you can't make a platformer, like, a hat in time is probably a really good example, where it's like, you can't make a platformer without really, well, <laughs> from the hat in time that I know of, you have to really, like, make it a fun, playable world. Uh, Banjo-Tooie is also actually a really good example of that. It's like, they, they had to, like, write, like, some explanation why everything was, like, put in, like, various places. So it's like, here's the character, he does a thing, and look at that, there's a thing nearby, or something like that. And it's like, you don't really need that. Uh, Hitman 3 did have less new technological mechanical advances compared to Hitman 2 than Hitman 2 had to 1. Which I find interesting as well, because, like, my brain thinks they're all the same game after not playing two or three yet, but it's like, I'd be curious. I do know two as the briefcase, though. People were a bit angry. I don't mind all the games being quite similar, though. Like, a consistent trilogy is not the worst, as long as you leave it at a trilogy. Um. Any advice before this battle? Advice. Hmm. A wise dragon once told me, aim high in life, but watch out for flying boxes. Huh? Nice. Yeah. I mean, the fact that you can play the old games in the new one, or the old levels in the new game, gives it that feeling. It's like Dirt Rally 2. You know, like, you can get Dirt Rally 1, and it does go for fairly cheap. Uh, this is a weird boss, by the way, because it's a bunch of just, like, platforming, and you just literally flame him at the end, and he might throw a box at you. But usually if you're walking... Um, yeah, yeah, I think the only problem I, I had with it was like, I don't know why as well, you just kill the boss here, and it's just dead, and then he drops 125 gems. Um, my only issue is the Steam Store page was a little confusing at the time, I think I had spoken about it at the time, but, uh, I, like, the solution was there, and I don't mind, like, uh, listen, if you're gonna make a headache, making me not pay, like, as in, if, if the headache doesn't involve me paying anymore, I'll, I'll wait. I'll, I'll be patient. I'll be patient. Uh, yeah, they're working on a James Bond game as well, which, uh, will be very interesting, because the James Bond license has been mixed with some really good games and some really air games, but, uh, so Nasty's place. I, okay, real talk, I can't even remember how much treasure you actually need. I'm gonna say 8,000. It could be, oh, unless it's 8,500. But I've got 10 and a half thousand, so. Here we are, the last world, Ganasty's world. Welcome to the end of the video game. Well, not quite. Uh, the Hitman formula only needs some adjustments. Yeah, like, really, you just need to make the combat, like, act the actual combat better, and if you want vehicle parts. Um, so Nasty's world, the hub world is literally a level select, and there's rats, rats, we are the rats. Um, to give you lives, I guess. Uh, there's like, how much treasure? I think there's like 75s in there. There you go, there's 75 in there and then a dragon to tell you the obvious. Hey, didn't I already free you? 
You're in Nasty's world now, Spyro, and you are the dragon who must defeat him. Bring him on! I'm ready! Reach the exit in each of Nasty's lands. Then you can challenge the Nork himself. So there's only six more dragons, and or five more dragons in the game, and uh, six including that guy. Um, also, you may be wondering, there's two dragons and 125 more treasure, and literally the rest of the level is this. But as as you finish and actually walk to the end of each level, um, the next room, the next level opens up, and there's some gems in there. Uh, but yes, also Spyro alludes to that. The remaining six dragons are all from uh, earlier in the game. They actually might be all from the first world. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's just kind of interesting that, like, you know, uh, Nasty Nork recaptured them. This level also includes a lot of the best ways of taking out enemies, launching barrels at them. It's very fun, very enjoyable. This guy fires some more stuff at you, and you're like, nah, get him. Um, they can say a bit more ground if they. Uh, Focus a bit on the books. I feel like it's impossible for anyone to make a James Bond game that doesn't like focus on the film, so that's a problem. You can poison the ventilation. Oh. Also, I love these TNT barrels. Um, and he's in his undies. His little hard undies. This level is good fun. Uh, only 400 gems though. They start going a little bit more uh, conservative on the gems because, I mean, how many gems am I at? 10, 6, 3, 3? There's only 12,000 in the game. This is kind of fun. You flame the TNT barrel, get some sedative or deadly poison. Ooh. I also love this. He's got metal in front of him, but uh, they're always carrying some kind of explosive barrel. Very fun level. I like this one. It's also fairly straightforward. And you gotta play Donkey Kong a bit. There you go. When you go into the server room, it's a big, big server room including lockers, toilets, and a cantina where you have NPCs everywhere, falling where they were, some are just sitting in their chairs, dead or unconscious. Ah, it's good fun when you can pull off a good a good thing like that. Keep up the good work, Spyro. I expect Nasty's really starting to worry about you. I'd be shaking in my North boots if I were him. Being able to, like, indirectly take out, like, people through some environmental, like, ability, really good fun. I like, um, I'm especially a big fan of, like, if you can, like, either electrify flo uh, flooring, or even just, like, make flooring slippery, and just, like, some guy, like, slips over or something. It's always a great fun feeling. Any game that can combine some environmental aspect to how you defeat enemies, uh, a la this level, I guess. High hopes of the 007 game. Yeah, I, I think there's there's good inspiration, and a lot of these devs are pretty good at making a game that's like what they've done. And I think in, in the context of Hitman, that's fine by me. Um, one licensed game I, I remember, like, it, it exists. Um, does anyone remember at uh, one of the Game Awards, they got Vin Diesel and uh, I don't know the other chick, but they were promoting the... Uh, um, a Fast and Furious game, and it was developed by Slightly Mad, who made Project Cars, and it was apparently so horrendously received, and I don't know a thing about it. And it's just like, oh yeah, chain effects as well. Oh no, it, it didn't chain. Uh, a few days ago you found a banana down on the floor, used Play sign function on pro is the comical banana peel on the ground. People, just, oh my goodness, really? I got a banana peel slip. It's the best game of all time now. Is it on Looper's list of 98 games of all time? I didn't think so. I don't think they put uh, any of the Spyro games on. I think they put one of the Ratchet and Clanks. Uh, this one's a fun kick the barrel into the right spot. Uh, the physics don't quite work on that one, but sure. Lots of red gems in that chest for some reason. Um, the remaster is good, the camera's a little close, but otherwise incredibly faithful, and I appreciate it. And I actually think that they they did improve the animations in, like, good places, because there's definitely, like, some bits where it's like, okay, like, the cutscenes, there's not much going on in them, sure, I'll accept that. Um, also good on them for getting most of the voice casts the same, well, maybe not most, but Tom Kenny, um, even though I know this game isn't Tom Kenny, but 
Um, I, yeah, I, well, I find I'm in an interesting spot with that one, because it's like, uh, I never played the Crash games growing up, but I like playing the Crash, uh, the original Crash games more than the remaster, and that's saying something given that the first Crash game doesn't support analog control. Uh, your favorite's always been, oh. Wow, I never thought I'd be rescued. Especially by such a little dragon. Uh, well, what I mean is, I always believed in you, Spyro. You gotta believe! <laughs> As a kid, I never knew what Parappa the Rapper was, so... Uh, personal favorite's always been hit some of the Rage Darts and no Gear Solid 4 to make him shoot everyone around them. Uh, <laughs> I mean... In a court of law, would a Rage Dart count as... It would count as, uh... Yeah, yeah, it's like, it's like if there's someone, like, mentally ill, and, like, you, you convince them of something. I think that, that, you know... Well, okay. Also, I love this one. Boom, boom, boom. Love it. Uh, especially these fire levels are so empty. Um... They're definitely empty in the sense of, like, the flat walls. A lot of these are, like, really flat surfaces, and obviously there's, like, water. I'd say just, like, the, the dithering gives it this, like, wonderfully, like, deep kind of look, even though, uh, there is no underneath the water in this game. Okay, now this is one thing I find absolutely hilarious, is the fact that, like, okay, so you can use the barrel to explode, like, that metal chest there. Okay, sure. Uh, you can also use the metal barrel to explode these two guys. Now, through that path, there is a key. The chest for the key is over, um, here. What's a little cursed is, uh, wait, was it this chest? I think what's a little cursed is that you can actually... Does it even blow up or don't? Yeah, what's really cursed is that you can blow up the key chest using the TNT there. You don't actually need the key in order to, to open it up. I don't know why, <laughs> but you can just do that. You have to kind of time it right, because they don't... Well, the guy doesn't pick him up if you've defeated the guy. But I always thought that was kind of interesting. Um, yeah, I guess, like, the levels are empty. Our 64 levels are also kind of empty in places. I think it was just a thing at the time um, to make the levels feel kind of big and expansive by having a bit of walking distance. Interestingly, the key, I don't think, even spawns after you've opened it up, so... Who knows? Very cursed. Very, very cursed. It should have been right there at the end of the hallway. Uh, now we're just going to play some uh, golf. They were new. Um, I will say I'm very amazed of like how many 3D games and how good looking the 3D games work on the PlayStation, given that uh, the Sega Saturn at the time didn't have as many 3D well you know, co-processing going on. I don't think they had as much, like, floating point units. Um, so, they made 3D a bit trickier. There's obviously, like, you know, some wobbliness with the PlayStation 1 in places. Um, the PC was a lot more powerful than consoles. It was. And, like, yeah, it, you can... I mean, Quake 3 came out in, what, 99? And that game looks great. It does a lot of modern techniques. I think the only thing that you could really, like, gripe on it is texture quality. Because... They had to release it on a CD. Um, Doom, yeah, Doom, of course. It's like Doom failed to be released on consoles in a good state until... Uh, even even the PlayStation's a bit quirky. I, I'll, I'll go with Doom. I'll go with Doom. Uh, I will also chuck... Um, uh, the original... Oh, hi there, computer. Uh, I love this level. Uh, in the remaster, these guys use paint guns. In this game, they gave him legit working rifles. This game was rated G for kids. They do not do this for kids anymore. Oh, give me some shots. Give me some shots. It just goes for it. Uh, great games are important. Um, Doom is definitely... Like, Doom is fairly impressive for its time. Um, yeah, this level's great. I love this level. You got these bandana guys throwing grenades at you. It's just good fun. I love it. Uh, 
Unreal Tournament is great. I actually, the original Unreal is legit. Like, it's top tier for me. I absolutely love the original Unreal. Um, but I will also say Unreal Tournament has one of the greatest underwater levels of all time. The one that's at like an underwater base and you have to swim like down into into the base. And it's an assault map. It's a, it's a multiplayer like... Eight, like oh, it's so amazing. Uh, this level with the dickish enemy placement. Sometimes they're in really mean spots, but I never found they're too bad apart from maybe that guy because they're kind of walking around the corner and he's over there, but... These guys, I just charge him. Ah, I mean, I gotta Thank cancel for Fortnite first. Me. I gotta cancel Fortnite first. The new one looked okay. Like, the only thing... Oh, my gosh. The only real gripe I had was, um... I'm not very good with wall jumping, but wall jumping seemed fairly, like, in place. It, it seemed like it made sense. Um... Uh, it should be a law set. The Unreal Engine should not be, uh, caught that way until they made a game with... Uh, the Unreal Engine on, uh, Unreal Tournament on it, um... Oh, yeah, the engine itself is absolutely remarkable, and... Um... I still need to, I still need to get into it. I'm trying to, like, just learn more game dev tools. Because I feel like I could really learn... Like, even if I don't make my own games necessarily, although... Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. It's always, like... You know, it piques my interest in some way. Um... But, uh, I'd really love to just, like, learn more tools, so currently I'm trying to figure out, uh, Godot. Um, although I did, uh, when I was, uh, testing my monitors, I, I, uh, like, before I bought them, I was trying to figure out how much space they would take up on my desk. And I just, like, you know, drew, drew some cubes in, in Unreal, because Unreal uses, uh, meters as its unit. Uh, so this is the thing, you gotta charge down here. Follow the track all the way, watch the hole in the middle, and you get the chest at the end. Uh, Godot is nice, the only game I ever cut it wasn't Godot. Godot feels very nice. Godot feels, like, remarkably fleshed out. The one thing I absolutely hated with Unity is the fact that prefabs couldn't be nested. So, like, yeah, if it's like, here's a player, it's like I'd have to define the player explicitly the entire way. Python syntax is amazing. Um, I am a bit of a sucker for C sharp, but I, you know, I can make Python work. I spent the past three days doing Python type annotation, like trying to trying to convert um, an existing like repository into, well, I mean, keep keep the repository running, but uh, add some Python annotations to it. This is kind of interesting. You can jump around here. Uh, my biggest problem with Python as a programming language is, uh, where's the multi-threading? It tries its best, but it's obviously not designed for it. And yeah, yeah, the wrong indentation always gets in the way. You can, you can write coroutines in Python, so you can write asynchronous programs, but Python itself, uh, doesn't multi-thread. I mean, we're getting some real good single-core processes, so I don't mind it as much. But it's always nice to have as an option. Uh, program you recommend for newbie one to get into game development? Uh, not. I don't have any in particular because I'm not. Be on the lookout for North Commando, Spyro. They better be on the lookout for me. He, he gives you this tip so late into the game. He's the second last dragon. Let's see. Is it jump over that guy. Oh. I guess you have to like kind of jump over his stuff from way far away. Uh, I I can't give you any, like, real, like, it worked for me advice on game development. I usually, um, uh, I'd probably say, yeah, it's like two parts. It's like, you gotta know, like, programming principles if you want to do, like, actual scripting or things like that. And then, uh, I don't know really anything about modeling. Um, Unity is fairly easy to get into. Unreal seems like there's a bit too much overhead to, as a first try. Uh, Singular claws are reaching the point of physically impossible until we tap into sci fi stuff like Penny. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. I still, I still wish. Um, I am curious about, like, well, we're gonna get new computer parts, like, maybe not this month, but next month. 
depends who's going to announce it first. Um, yeah, Godot seems like probably the easiest one to start off with. They've got a pretty simple like language to, to start off. And it's a real small editor as well. Alright, that's probably the meanest enemy, the last two. We did it. Um, and that as well, like, yeah, a lot of people, do well, I guess a lot of people document Unity as well, but Godot seems like a reduced feature set really gets you thinking about what you, like, want to do. Whereas, like, Unity, sometimes it's a bit easy to, like, lean into the, you know, the overkill right away. So, that was the level. Godot ID is written in Godot. Exactly. So who invented Godot then? John Godot. Uh, this last world's kind of interesting because there's only two levels. Uh, and then you're immediately thrust into the boss level. There's not actually a flight level as well. So here we are. Get the gems. And there you go. That is... Hold on. Wait for it. Wait for it. 200 out of 200, there are 500 gems in the Nasty Nork level, and we'll go. Um, Godot base is, uh, I believe you, there's a, there's a C-sharp, like a mono-based, um, version of Godot you can use as well, if you want to write in that, but I do think they encourage writing it just in, uh, Godot script. Um, so here's Nasty Nork, he is up there on a ledge, he will terrorize you with little explosions and the explosions are kind of annoying uh also there's no dragons in this level also if you die you go back to the very very beginning but of course there's lots of gems you gotta pick up and uh it's not fun if you miss any of them so let's hope i don't uh to start off there's a guy with a key he is very slow around the first like three corners but i'm gonna absolutely botch up trying to get oh i got him okay Let's back up just so I'm sure I didn't miss anything, because legit, this level is a pain if you miss one gem. Because it's like, oh, you get to the end of the fight, oh, you missed the gem, now you gotta do the whole fight again. It's very, very irritating. Yeah, Python... Python has, uh, it's bits missing. So, obviously, you get the key, you put it on the door. Nope. You can't. They don't color code the keys, but, uh, that key corresponds to this door. So open the door, and we got another, another thief. He runs away. He actually really makes do on this one. There you go. I felt pretty confident about not missing any gems, but I'm just gonna double check. It's a good jam for a final boss music, though. Uh... Features for Python and mathematical things. Yeah, definitely, like, I, I think what makes NumPy really great, um, I don't use NumPy a ton in my actual line of work, so I haven't used it, like, I'm gonna speak completely from conjecture, but I hope it's right, uh, is the fact that NumPy has a lot of, um, like, really fast kind of helper, uh, methods. And particularly, I think it doesn't it have a lot of a lot of it's compiled as well. There's like this, this surprising amount of Python that isn't compiled. Although one thing I found out uh, today when uh, trying to convert uh, or add type annotations to Python is uh, we've got code with uh, testing date times, and we mocked the date time class. And uh, turns out when you add in type an annotations, uh, it yells at you for you're not allowed to monkey or one. Yeah, you're not allowed to monkey patch date time. C Python is just like, nah, nah, man. We optimize the heck out of it. It, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> it's just like, oh, okay. So, yeah. I mean, same thing with like TensorFlow. I mean, like TensorFlow isn't mandatory, but uh, effectively TensorFlow is just, it's a Python wrapper to something that is entirely writing in native code or running in native code. So native that it pretty much leverages uh, hardware. But I think that's kind of the nice thing about Python as well is the fact that, like, for the people who really need it, it's good at it lets you abstract away the the stuff. So I know I have just enough gems because uh, if you've got 400 before you run down here, you're set. The moment you start running down here, you gotta bolt it. 
You have a platforming pathway, it gets narrower as you go along. Uh, as a kid, I'd sweat, I'd die. It's painful. As an adult, I've done it way too many times. Although you do look like you're kind of real fine at the end. So you get up the top, he does one hit, and he's toast. And that's it. That is the uh, end of the game. <laughs> So here we are, the final cutscene. Sorry I took so long. I kind of forgot about you. What about Ganasty Ganork? Nasty Nork? His toast! So now there's order again in the Dragon Kingdom? Well, mostly. I've still got some treasure to pick up. What will you do next? I'd say the sky's the limit. And there you go. Now I kid a little bit, that's a little bit extra. A little bit extra. Listen, all of Insomniac's games, all of uh, Naughty Dog's games as well, they always chuck in a little bit extra when you think you're just done. Um, we have a fun little credit sequence where the camera keeps flying around all these levels. Here's something I want to figure out off the top of my head. So the camera's flying around, it's going to fade to black, and it's going to immediately cut in with the new level. Like, this makes me wonder. How much memory does it take to actually have a level, like, in, in, in scene? Are they allowed to have two levels loaded? It's missing features. So there's no gems, there's no enemies, there's no, like, boxes. Some of the levels are um, missing um, some things. Like, I don't think the tents are on this level. It's just the ground. Uh, the portal effects are obviously all disabled. But I'm really curious, like, yeah, how it manages to just go from one level to the next immediately in this credit sequence. And they do this for all the games as well. They do this, uh, well, so much so that they, uh, for some reason, reuse the same music. Hey, you go, that's Stuart Copeland. Uh, are they gonna show Carlos's name? Hey, no, that's the, that's the design. Character design is Clancy Brown. Miss him. There you go, Carlos Alazraki. Character design is legit, like, that's a, that's a, what's the term? It doesn't get as much praise as it should. Like, the character is the guy you're looking at the most. They gotta get it right. That camera is totally, totally showing the, uh, inside of that building there. Okay, but you're not supposed to see that high. Listen, they modeled the tops of some of these buildings, but, uh, maybe not all of them. Yeah, I love this kind of, like, fly-through through some of the levels, even if, uh, this specific one is not much of a fly-through, is it? It's good fun. It, it gives you some, you know, you went on an adventure, man. You went to all these crazy fun levels. So, you've beaten the game, you've defeated Nasty Nork, and what do you get? Well, there's a one last dragon in front of you. So... <laughs> Nasty's ancient history now. So, what's in there? I believe this is Nasty's treasure hoard. But the gate will not open until you have found everything in the Dragon Kingdom. Come back when you have reached 100%. I don't know off the top of my head if he has a different line of dialogue if you have hit 100%, which you wouldn't at that point. Now you have, because that was 80 dragons. I'm going to replay it, just in case he does say something different. Similar to, to um, Toasty earlier. Nasty's ancient history now. So, what but the door is open now. I believe this is Nasty's treasure hoard. But the gate will not open oh, no. until you have found everything in the- He says the same thing. Oh well. So, anyways, yeah, with with that, that is 100% uh, of the game, you get a bonus level, Nasty's Loot. So if you remember at the very, 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 very beginning of the game, uh, the one dragon narrating at the beginning said there were five or six worlds. The or six is Nasty's world. And then he said there are 12,000 treasure, or is it 14,000? Well, I'm at 12,000 now, and this level has 2,000, so there you go. There's your 14. The fun, wacky level where you get to fly around, but you can't fly up. 
you're limited by how high you've last been. So once you've jumped up to a ledge, you can fly from that ledge. It's a really neat, fun little bonus level. There's nothing there to kill you apart from water. Treasure plant. Oh, exactly. It's filled with all these, like, purple... Um, oh. <laughs> these, uh... Key thieves, first of all. But also, it's filled with all these purple gems all over the place. So, watch that number in the top left. Like, absolutely skyrocket. Once you get some keys, you can use the keys to open these locked doors, which reveal some stairs. Professor X's greatest enemy. But in particular, it puts you at a higher ledge, which means you can glide from this ledge to maybe this one. Well, there's another guy. I'm gonna leave, uh... Well, I'm gonna be getting the, the keys first. Because I think it's a lot e Oh my gosh. It's a lot easier to get the keys and be able to glide up. You know, later on and around and get all the treasure just this very moment. But yeah, I guess uh, overall, uh, oh, and here comes the plane. Um, overall, I really love this game. I feel like I'm able to even, like, you know, to blitz it pretty quickly. Like, how long was the first stream? Like an hour 47? And I've only just now hit two hours, so this is, or two hours one. So this is going to be just under four hours of a playthrough. And, uh, there you go. You've got to legit chase this guy. You can't even, like, cheese it. But you can kind of cut the corners. Oh, oh. There you go. Let me pick up the key. Don't worry. Um, so I feel like I, I've played this game so many times I can, I can just breeze through it. I can't breeze through the sequel as fast, but it might be a three-stream kind of game if, if uh, I probably win. I'll replay it, because I do want to replay it in a, in a, in a more modern light. Uh, now you got to chase this guy through the lava, the lava corridor. They put poles in for some reason. Um, and, it, and I guess, yeah, ultimately I do want to play Spyro 3 on, on the stream at some point. But I don't want to play them all back to back, because it gets a little tiring. So I'll save them for another point in time. But as for this game, this one is my favorite out of the three. Um, I find it's interesting because I don't have any, like, crazy nostalgia for 3, but it feels like a period of game that, like, you know, I do really appreciate for what it is. But I really like this one because of how consistent it is, how it does, and there's Facebook again, wow. Um, who keeps Facebook messaging? I have, like, two friends on Facebook. It's probably my mum. She doesn't know my stream times, bro. I'm a streamer. Quit my day job for streamer. There are... Don't do that, kids. Don't actually, like, do streaming as a day job. It was a fun hobby. <laughs> save, save your... Save your soul from caring too much about, about streaming. I love how you open up this door as well, and all it is is it's just a slightly higher platform. But that's all you need, because this will let you get to that ledge over there. Now, you gotta be very careful with this ledge, because it's, uh, it's... The exit's over there, so... Instead... Let's get the, the fireworks all over the place. I think there's three, maybe four. Oops. There are four, here we go. Um... But yeah, it's really consistent just how its mechanics work. The fact that, like, you know, I can really understand this game just as a kid. We were growing up and playing it, um... And it teaches you everything you need to know, purely through visuals and, and sound as well. I guess that's a big thing, is that it was a real, like, important game for me, uh, growing up with, you know, with sound, I guess. Um, and I guess that's something that is, like, perhaps we, we take sound for a given, because, uh, you know, you can get CD quality audio from a PS1 disc, um, although they didn't use it for this game at all, but... Up, it still sounds fine. Um, but, you know, we've slightly crisper audio on the PS2, and then most games are kind of there. Maybe they'll go a little more uncompressed on sound. Uh, but for me at the time, it's like I'm coming out of a, a Game Boy. And the Game Boy sounds okay, but the hub worlds, the levels, the music, the glitches. I definitely think Spyro 3, like, Spyro 3 is probably second in my list. 
I know, right? It's like, <laughs> I was saying, it's like, oh, the nostalgia, like, I don't have the nostalgia for it, and then it's like, oh, I still like it more than Spyro 2. I think Spyro 3 is, um, more zanier as well. Spyro 2 sometimes, like, it kind of runs out of ideas in places. Whereas, like, Spyro 3, I never feel like, uh, you know, it, it milks anything for too long. And then, here's a wonderful room. Set fire and watch it all go. I think in the European version, Spyro says something there. I don't know why. But I, I love this room. It's just, oh, oh, you just pick up everything. And watch that number go. All the way to the moon. What year did this game come out? Not too bad, it was, it was 1998, so... You got 2,000 treasure, you're done. Game says 120%, because why not? 120%? Makes sense. And that's it, that is the game, actually. <laughs> you get a different cutscene. Spyro the dragon, you've defeated Ganasty Ganork, collected the dragon egg, oh, Spox is green. the Whoops. dragons, and recovered every bit of treasure in the dragon kingdom. How do you feel? I feel fired up, Bob. And I'm happy for the dragon world, of course. I certainly wouldn't want to spend the rest of my dragon days butting heads with Nasty Nork and his weird minions. What's a minion? Uh, never mind. <laughs> you gotta wait until the stick with me for that one. For every good battle, you need a good adversary. And I felt that Nasty, in spite of his misguided nature, was a worthy opponent. Uh oh. Here we go again. I was always unsure of what they were doing with the here we go again ending, but sure, okay. Uh, did you enjoy the credits five minutes ago? Because here they are again, but they changed the backdrop this time to the levels from the second half of the game, so. So I got to speak a little more about this game, but yeah. Other than that, like visually, it holds up. It doesn't ha well, it's got a lot of charm with like how it does its particle effects. It also doesn't do the wobbly textures too much. It's pretty good on that one. And I think for me as well, it's just a full presentation thing. It's just the fact that like, you know, it makes sense. I have to free every dragon all over again. Um, like, it's just the fact that it's just gems, treasure, sorry, gem that's the same thing. Gems, dragons, and I guess the dragon eggs for that brief moment. But all 3D games are usually so buggy if it was possible. Yeah, it's, it's a bit buggy in places, but I was going to say, I'm playing through Borderlands the pre-sequel with a mate. Uh, the Australian one. Listen, I, I, I'm even going as like, uh, they have such thick Australian accents in that game. But like, legit, like, there are parts where it's like, oh look, there's a hole in the floor. Like, where you can clearly see the map geometry just didn't line up. And I jump in it, and I legitimately fall out through the map, and die. And my computer is having a moment. Um, but I legitimately die after falling out of the map. This is the second time it's happened. And I'm like, I haven't even been in the game and I'm just explicitly finding this. I found a spot in Borderlands 2 that's like that as well. And uh, well, I'm not even going to mention the uh, the default Unreal 3 texture in one of the rooms in Borderlands 2. It's like, oh, there's some horrendous, like, buggy stuff in, in modern games nowadays as well. Old games, like, they're buggy, but they're always buggy in their own different ways because everyone's trying to take them on in their own directions. Whereas, like, games nowadays, they're only buggy in the sense of they're trying so many things and they just, they don't, they don't cover all their bases. Um, a lot of the time it's map geometry. Uh, I don't know of too many glitches in this game, and I, I say that knowing um, that, like I was saying, it's like, oh, I speedrun and I get, like, under three hours, which is not the crazy fastest time in the world, but seems fast to me. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I know the jump charge glitch that you can do in Spyro 2, and if I do play Spyro, well, when I play Spyro 2, I will certainly showcase things that you can do by jump charging. Uh, so you get sent back to the beginning of the game, you got 120%, so walk onto the point, save the game. I don't think I got too much more to say on this one. Does anyone have anything else to say? It's a good game. It's a real good game. It's just, it's a classic. And it wasn't on, um... It wasn't on, I forgot the name of the website. It wasn't on Looper's top 98 games of all time, so... 
you know, I guess I guess it's not one of the best games of all time. Um, oh, why don't, why don't I show the 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 Spyro, sorry, the, the Crash Thief? Three. Oh my gosh, I can speak. So okay, I'm gonna open up Game Facts, and I'm pretty sure in the cheats part. Uh, Okay, apparently there's a code that lets you use the balloonist to go to any world. Nice. Uh, hold L1 and triangle. There you go. That was fairly easy, actually. No, no, the screen is black because the game is... Oh! Oh my goodness! This just happens. This spooks you out as a kid. Uh, I do think they put an early build in. I don't know which came first, but like both games feel like they put an early build in their games and not like the full finished like kind of version of the game. So you can stay above the competition. There's, there's barely any time to read this as well. <laughs> Okay, see, to me as a kid, n never before seen levels. These were larger levels, I will say that. Um, but uh, me as a kid, I didn't know any Crash Bandicoot at the time. Like, I knew of Crash Bandicoot, but I had never played any of the games. And then when I did feel the urge to play them, I bought the, the Wrath of Cortex on the PS2. That'll be an interesting one, because that's actually a game I have played as a kid. But they do show a lot of a lot of the game. And Crash is dead. It's a whole new meaning to bigger and better. They really did like doing the bigger and betters. Oh boy. I okay, real talk, I don't mind Donkey Kong 64's like very obnoxious backtracking. I think Bandra 2 is like too too far. I always thought this was kind of weird, like this this is the level they used to showcase. Uh, I think this is like level 8 or 9 in the actual game, but it's like, oh, okay. They didn't even have any pictures of it, it just kind of happens. I will say, the water is very nice looking in this. Um, Banjo, Banjo-Kazooie was the first game, and then Banjo-Tooie was the sequel that legitimately was so massive. There were some levels in Banjo Kazooie near the end of the game that were like kind of ridiculously big, but not like too bad. Well, they were too bad, but at least it was like oh, it was like one or two levels. And then Banjo Tooie was like every level took like two hours to just navigate. Uh, where, where after years and years of someone going through the code and reverse engineering, uh, found another not star. What up, Mario 64? Oh, is this like really early in the game? <laughs> oh. And there I go, off into the pits. I'm gonna get that gem. I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna get the gem in the demo. I'm gonna do it. Why not? Um, I've only played Crash 3, like, maybe, like, three times total. I will say, I prefer Crash 2 more. Actually, I guess my ordering of the Crash games is reverse of the Spyro games. The Spyro I do 1 through 2. Crash I did this. This is much louder than me, isn't it? This is much louder than the game itself, and there's no volume setting in either the game or this. Like, I'm afraid if I hit pause, it's just gonna quit me out. It's an interesting demo, though, and actually something I'm surprised more games don't do. It was pretty big in the Xbox days, the demos. Well, decided to go down the gutsier path and it still worked out. Okay. Uh, I did not hear Aku Aku make a noise, so I'm just gonna assume uh, they didn't know that they were gonna reuse the same sound for the third game in a row. Or the sound mixing is just completely whack and they they, they needed to revisit it. Oh, they chucked the live out all the way over there. Can you see that? Why are there three lives there? They're taunting me. I don't think you can even get there, can you? Oh, 
I wonder as well if like this is uh, people's first announcements to the game. It's probably appeared in magazines before. Uh, oh my goodness! It probably appears in magazines before uh, you know you pick up your copy of Spyro the Dragon and suddenly oh look, what's that? I also wonder whether Spyro the Dragon Red, or sorry, uh, had any uh, improved marketing by being a game developed by almost the same people. Well, it's not the same people, but they're in the same studio. They're all sharing each other's notes, you know? I always thought these, uh, these hover, hover bike, these jet ski levels were interesting, but definitely like. <laughs> That's something very different. It's like someone had a really good tech demo and they just decided to commit to it. Oh. Whoops. I don't remember there being this many boxes just loosely all around the level though. Maybe they move them later on. Alright, we get the C. The C stands for Corrupt My Soul with Crash 3. Oh. <laughs> you know one thing that, like, and I, I find a lot of crash games, or a lot of crash levels suffer from, there's not as many iconic landmarks. Sometimes the levels just keep going, and, uh, like, this is an example where it's just like, I don't know, man, like, the end of the level looks very similar to the beginning of the level. And I'm saying that given that it's, this one's like a, a real big 3D level, and not just like a corridor, like most of the crash levels are. Whereas, I don't know, Spyro clicks to me, because everything kind of stands out. So I don't think any crash levels have like four checkpoints usually, so... Still... Yeah, it's a, it's a lengthy level, isn't it? Okay, oh look, three boxes. Look at that. I'm gonna want that gem. There better be a gem there. I missed the gem. <laughs> I, th I think it just teases you again. It's the same teaser as well. Is it even? It's, it's just, you're just teasing the same thing again. Come on, game. Come on. I don't think I got any ideas. Well, there you have it. That's, uh, that's, I think, everything I know of. With Spyro the Dragon, I don't think there's anything else. There's a 99 lives code apparently, uh, and apparently you can view the credits by inputting a cheat code on the inventory. But I don't think there's anything. Yeah, it's it, it seems pretty early. It's got the music going, which is nice because I think the Crash Tag Team, sorry, Crash Team Racing demo in the seek in Spyro 2, I don't think it has music. Coco in ancient China. Um, I d definitely the Spyro the Dragon demo in Crash 3 feels more fleshed out, where you get access to the whole first hub as well as, um, stone level and night level, I forgot the names. <laughs> and then they walled off, uh, the sunset one. The music was lacking instruments though. Oh, it was actually lacking instruments. And it's just come back in. Oh, you can pause. What? Oh, I guess, okay. Look at that, you can tweak the volume. Sure. Also, uh, is that is that the name of the level usually? Tell No Tales? Demo? Is that it? What is CTR? What is CTR? Who knows? Who knows? Interesting that you can't quit the level. Okay. 
But I told you, there's 40 gems. You gotta get the 40 gems and the 28 relics already. Oh my gosh, I got the times right. Alright, well, I guess with that, I would like to thank you all so very much for watching. Uh, I was lacking an accordion and some percussion. Ah, that makes sense. Thank you all so very much for watching. If you did enjoy the stream, uh, then, you know, I appreciate it. That's all, that's all you need. You just need to, <laughs> to, to like it, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> uh, if you missed bits of this or you wanted to view, and wow, I waited on the pause menu too long and it even it just cut back in with the, the intro again. Wow. Um, Oh yeah, yeah, really, really appreciate you guys being here as well. Um, it's good fun chatting, good fun bouncing off, um, just conversations. It's good fun. Um, yeah, if you miss any of us, uh, the VOD will be on YouTube pretty soon. Uh, I will look up, I, I wrote down one hour and six in the stream, I wrote down. That's when I gotta figure out when the, the, the two, four drum beat on the three, four, um, meter. I will figure out the term, it will be there, trust me. Until then, have a good one. Stay safe. Eat your greens. Don't stay up too late. I don't know. I, I, I can't get over that meter thing. <laughs> Alright. See ya.